In this week's update, we're following the big money, aka smart money, to find out where the biggest bets are being placed on the future of housing in America, so you have the inside scoop on opportunities coming up and can use this information to make better decisions when it comes to buying, selling, and investing in Southwest Florida. So let's get after it. Hey, for those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Rick Harrison, and this week we're following the money through insider data tracked by one of the go-to research firms, John Burns Research and Consulting, to find out where the biggest bets are being made in residential housing housing this year. Plus, we'll break down why economists are completely reversing their outlook for the housing market over the next two years, presenting a huge dilemma for would-be home buyers. That's all coming up in today's market update. But before we get into those stories, we start off with this week's local housing market stats for Lee County, where we see almost all stats heading in the wrong direction this week. And this is the stats for the week of 227. So these are stats as of this morning. New listings for Lee County are at 782. That's down 7.5%. That's not really where we want to see inventory going, especially if you're a buyer waiting on the sidelines, hoping that things are going to cool down, prices are going to come down. We want to see new listings going the other way. But unfortunately, we see new listings now slowing down again for Lee County. Solds is also slowing down. That's no surprise. Interest rates have gone back up to around the 7% range right now. And it looks like that 6 to 7% is a key range for interest rates right now. Every 1%, we see about 10% more buyers entering the market. Um, solds are at 282. That's down 13.5%. And then we see pending here, 599. That's up 5.6% week over week. So again, new listings going down and pendings going up is not what we want to see for prices to come down. Another stat here, median sales price for Lee County is at 409.5. That's up 2.4% week over week. Same thing with median listing price. That's also up 5.9% week over week to 539.450. And then days on market have not changed this week for Lee County. That's at 39. Moving on to Collier County. Same thing here. We see new listings again, 416. That's down almost 10% week over week. Again, not where we want things to be heading. Solds down 2.7%, 151. Pending are also up here, 269. That's up 5.3% week over week. Same thing, median sales price up 692, um, almost 693. That's up 5.8% week over week. And median listing price as well, also up 3.5% to 775 for Collier County. Days on market did tick up a little bit here in this market, uh, up 2.7%, nothing noticeable. And it's still you know, right around the average that we're seeing for most markets uh, across the nation right now. Current inventory levels, single families, 9,221. That's down 2.6% month over month. It's also up 60% year over year. Again, you know, like, the, like I've been saying, the last two to three years, we saw markets that were incredibly low inventory. So for it to be up 60%, it was really not saying that much considering how low it was over the last couple of years. Same thing with condos here, 6,281. That's up 1.2% uh, month over month and 104% year over year. Foreclosures up two to 48. Uh, interest rates right now are at 7% as of this morning. That's actually down four basis points. So that's moving in the right direction. But again, based on what we're seeing, it's going to fluctuate around this range for quite a while until we start to see some rate cuts possibly later in the year, maybe as early as May. Average rent again for Fort Myers area is 1930. That's for a two bedroom, two bath condo or apartment. So really, if you're looking for something like a 3-2, you're looking closer to the $2,200, $2,300 mark. Um, but rents have started to come down a little bit. So Real quick, as I do every week, I just want to touch on the, the government 10-year bond, as this does give us a pretty good leading indication as to where mortgage rates are heading next. This white line is a 200-day moving average. That is support right now. And you can see we are heading back and forth between the six. Uh, 6.8 to 7.1% 7, 7 range for mortgage rates right now. And that will continue again, like I said, until the Fed um, is poised or starts to get more dovish and sounds like they are going to uh, begin lowering rates. Now, as I alluded to in the introduction of this video, we are going to be following the smart money. And that comes on the heels of really some insider research and, and information that unless you're really in the space and that's what you do is market data and information and research, then you're not going to really know. You're not going to be looking at that or you're a big time investor who needs to know these stats. But um, this whole thing is really tracking the demand for building materials and where those are going to be heading over the next year into 2025 as well. The first section is the best of times, single family new construction. So a couple of highlights from the story. This year, strength in the single family new construction end market will drive stronger demand for building products. Rate buy downs of frozen resale market and quick moving homes boosted single family new home sales in 2023. 
if you've been watching and if you're in the market or if you've been in the market for any amount of time, you know that one of the biggest issues right now for inventory coming on the market is that people who have the homes who need to sell also need to buy. And they're not willing to give up their two or 3% interest rate for something at five or six or even 7% now. So that has really caused a stalemate in resale homes. So you're not seeing a lot of inventory come on from real resale homes recently, but most of the actual purchases have been happening in new construction because that's a market that's free to move because there's nobody living in those homes. Single family starts per community were up 36% year over year in January of 2024 and above seasonal norms. So the demand is there. You can see that the buyer demand is there. And with those incentives, like the buy downs, rate buy downs. So instead of paying 7%, maybe you're paying 5% or 6% or maybe even 4% for the first one or two years. And then those rates go up. Um, those are going to be some huge incentives. And that's why we're seeing so many people buy in new construction. The cadence of this demand is predictable and driven by build schedules. So a lot of this stuff is already planned out and ready to go. Um, there's plenty of uh, inventory already being built. And a lot of it has been, you know, gone under contract, especially in those really high demand communities, places like Wild Blue down in uh, Fort Myers or even Esplanade Lake. You know, those communities in that area is seeing huge demand and they're really they're selling out. The key takeaway here is for those largely concentrated in single family end market plan to accelerate production to meet growing demand. If highly exposed to multifamily, though, plan for a decline in demand for your products over the second half of 2024. So that right there kind of sums up the entire story. In conjunction with that, we also hear that now the Fed is starting to look a little bit more hawkish because of the recent data that's come out with the CPI coming in hotter than expected, the job reports coming in hotter than expected. The Fed rate cuts are likely to be slow, but not necessarily steady. So in the past where we've seen you know, up the escalator, raising the rates slowly, and then down the elevator, they take it straight down right away after they hit that cusp. We're actually seeing the reverse happen here. They're taking the elevator up. They raised the rates real quick within one year. You know, they were up almost 3%. And then now we're starting, we're, we're looking like we're going to see this come down slowly, more like an escalator. So it might take some time, but they are expecting there to be at least be three um, quarter point uh, reductions in in the end of this year. Um, some say as early as May, but I think it's going to be later in the year, which means until then, the housing market in our area at least is probably going to be slower. Uh, there's not going to be as much demand until rates start to come down. The, the other two stories here are the higher expectations for the U.S. economy. Now, this is in the Florida Realtors website, but this is from New York's Associated Press. Uh, the economy likely will grow 2.2% after adjusting for inflation. So that is also stronger than expected. And because of that, we're seeing now that a lot of these expectations and predictions forecasts from economists are being reversed. Um, even with rate rates very high, the job market and U.S. household spending have remained remarkably resilient. Now, you can argue all day if that's because of credit cards and you know debt spending, things like that. But it still remains, you know, at least as of right now, it still looks resilient. Uh, Chief U.S. economist at Morgan Stanley and president of NABE said a wide range of factors are behind the 2024 upgrade, including spending by both the governments and households. Now, the, the governments have been spending money like crazy anyways, so I don't see that as a huge effect. But households still spending money um, is a good indication. I, you know, I really want to believe that most people aren't going to put themselves in a precarious situation where they can't afford the debt that they have. But uh, just, just knowing the cycles and his history, that's probably not the case. I'm sure there's quite a few people who probably over, lever over leverage themselves in this market. But, you know, we don't know that for sure. So that's not something we can count on. Um, rate changes take a notoriously long time to snake through the economy and take full effect. That means past hikes, which began two years ago, could still ultimately tip the economy into recession. So you know, I think that might be a little bit far out two years, but I do think that it is a lagging indicator. It's something that we're not going to see really hit. It's starting to hit, I think. That's why I think things have slowed down quite a bit since the beginning of the year and actually since really halfway through 2023. But we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Real estate trends, what's in store for 2024? So watch for the market to reignite over the next several months. Like I said, this probably isn't going to start until rate hikes start to um, or not rate hikes, rate cuts start to take place. Um, Florida saw almost $200 billion in closed sales in 2023, which 2023 wasn't really a great year compared to 2022, but it wasn't very far below it. That right there is telling you there are still people, there's still a lot of demand for this area. 
Um, over the next several months, the market could reignite a little bit. Even though there aren't as many homes for sale, the ones that are for sale are selling for more. So like you just saw in our local stats, both Lee and Collier County, the prices are still rising. Inventory is actually now declining again. Um, and pending sales are both up in both areas as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And despite all the calls for a market crash in the area, we are still in a market that looks to be warm. You know, we're not, we're still in what would be considered a, a seller's market uh, for the most part, but it, it is more of a balanced market now. Buyers do have some leverage uh, to get some incentives and uh, do have some time now to really look at the home for what it is, do the inspections, you know, really make sure that you're buying something that you really want. Because so now these next two, this one's from Redfin and the next one is actually from John Burns Research again, but this is just to show you the contrast and what's going on in the market. So as 7% mortgage rates keep buyers on the sidelines right now, um, new listings rose 10% year over year. Sellers are hoping to take advantage of these high prices. So sales prices are actually up 6% year over year. So that's the biggest increase since October of 2022. But just contrasting this article, 7% mortgage rates, keeping buyers on the sidelines, falling mortgage rates lifted home sales. So builders report usually strong sales in December and January's mortgage rates fall. The resale market will likely follow. So even though we're seeing this really come through home builders and new construction, it's a it, it's usually that's a leading indicator, like I said, because there's nobody in those homes. You can buy them right away. People can move in. They're, they're moving ready. Whereas resale homes usually take some time because the rates need to come down and give those homeowners an opportunity to, you know, find their property and get a rate that's going to make sense for them financially to move. Now, while these insights point to a housing market poised to reignite later this year, all real estate is hyper local, varying from city to city, and in many cases, even community to community. Even more importantly, will depend largely on your personal circumstances and goals. So if you have questions or just want to get my take on something, please reach out like many of you do. I love hearing from you guys and getting your take on things as well. So comment below or you can text or call me directly at 239-310-5478. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay positive, and more importantly, stay free. I was just a little boy, everybody told me you could be whatever you want to be. So I told myself.